to begin with, we need to make sure that our table is marked up. And as we know, we don't have any tags, so we're going to come to the Reading Order panel. We click on that icon, and then we need to drop this down for Options and show the Reading Order panel. Now, each element of the table needs to be marked as a cell, so that's the first thing we're going to do. We're going to highlight the top area here, and then we're going to click Cell, and we're going to do that for each area that is an individual cell. And I'll just speed up the rest of the process. And there you see I have marked up each part of the table as a cell. The next thing that we need to do is to make those cells into a table. And so I'm going to come over here now and close out the reading order panel and bring up the tagging. And you see that I have all the table data cells all marked up. But what I need to do is come up here to tags and right click and click new tag and change the type to a table. There we go. Now this has been put at the very end and so I'm going to have to drag it all the way up to the top and drop it in here. And now I need to build some structure inside that table for our data cells. To build the rest of the structure, we need to think about what we're wanting to accomplish. We have two things that we need to build in structure. One, we need to build in the rows, and then we also need to build in which of these cells are actually going to be table headers. I'm going to start with rows. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here to table. I'm going to right click on it and do new tag. Change the type to table row and click OK. And then I'm going to continue to do that until I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11 rows. So I only have one. So I'm going to continue to build that. You don't have to watch the rest of this. So I'll just go ahead and get through this. So here are our 12 table rows. And the first thing I'm going to do is start here with this top row and take the data for it. Here it is. And I'm going to drag that up to the first row. And you see how the little line shows up underneath the row. So I just drop it there. And then I'm needing the next four of these table data information. You see one, two, three and four and so I need all four of those to drop into the second one you have to be real careful so I'm going to hold down my shift key and it's going to highlight all four of those and then I'm going to drag it up to the second the second table row and drop it in and so you continue to do that now I'll pause the video so I just completed moving all the table data into the appropriate rows. And you'll see that they are all nested within the row. So now I'll close out all the rows. And then all that is going to be nested inside the table. Now we have the basic structure of the table in place. We're able to add some more structure to it to improve the ability for those using screen readers and other assistive technologies to read the table. The first thing we're going to look at here is this main heading here. It is listed as a table row, but the content is over here in the data cell. So what I'm going to do is click on this and then put my cursor in it and change it to a table header, a TH. So I have this header, 
and then these four are headers, and then these three are headers. Now I should find each of these in the next row. Right here, each one of these is going to be a table header. And then we have here in this next row the word salad, which is this one right here. It also is a table header. And then we're going to go on down to the next, let's see, we're going to go down one, two, to this third row here, or this next row here. And we should be able to find entree and change that. And then we're going to go down to the fourth to last, I believe. Nope, it's in the next one. Here we go. And we're going to open that up and change the table data cell to a table header. So we have added headers. And that's good. A nice way to look at the work you've done is to come over to the show reading order panel. And once you have that in place, you can select the table and click Table Editor. And it will mark up the content showing you which cells are data cells and which cells are headings, as you see. Now, if you right click on this, you can go to the Table Editor Options and change the colors. So let's say we want the data cells to be gray. So we can just choose that and click OK. So there you go. It's grayed them out. And so if we want the headings to pop, you can pick a color that's different from the others. But that's the way you can quickly look at them. The next bit we need to fix is the spanning of the columns. The title here is not essentially a umbrella heading for the four headings underneath it, but we're going to pretend that is the way it is so I can show you how to deal with the span of the column. So basically this heading here would span these four columns. So what I'm going to do is right click here, go to cell properties, and you see it's already marked as a header cell, which is what we need, and we need it to span four columns. So we're just come here to column span and type in 4 and click OK. Since we don't have to fix the rest of the column headings, we now can come down to the row headings, the salad, entree, and dessert. All three of these span three different rows. So the way we're going to fix that is we're going to right click here on salad to table cell properties and then change row span to three and click OK. I'm going to do that for entree, row span to three and dessert span to three. Another setting that you can handle is coming to the headings and defining what scope they have. In this case, I have the salad heading. I right click on it, go to table cell properties, and it, I've got the row span done, but I need to change the scope to be rows. And then I'm going to do the same here for entree and dessert. And then the table headers that are up here that are for columns, I'm going to right click, go table cell properties, and click column. Now, if you want to add a finishing touch to your table to make it very accessible for those using screen readers, 
you need to understand that you can add content to the table that will help the screen reading software determine what cell is associated with what row and what column headings. So the first thing you would have to do is go to each of your column headings, right click, table cell, and then here at the ID you're going to type a code in for each one of these. And I'm going to type column one, I'm going to click OK. And then Tuesday, I'm going to type column two. And Wednesday, column three. Now I have to do that with the row headings. The next step is to go through all the data cells and create associations. So I'm going to come here to the first cell under Monday for salad, right click, go to table cell properties, and then I want to find the associated header cells. So I click plus, then I'm going to click checkbox on remember my choice and click no. And you notice that it says add table header ID. So I now have salad and then I'm going to do that again and I'm going to choose the column heading. And you have to do that for each one of these data cells. Unfortunately, when we made this table from Word and then proceeded to add data cells throughout the table, we lost some of the structure that we built that would help a screen reader navigate the content. So I'm going to come over here to Tags, go into the table, and let's go here to the first row and you'll see here's the content food for the world's conference luncheon menu and it doesn't have an h1 tag anymore so what i'm going to do is come up here to the table header tag and right click click new tag and then change the type to heading one and i could do that for other areas of the table, but I just want that heading one to be in there so that the screen reader can find the menu quickly. And that ends my lesson on how to manually mark up the content of a table in PDF.